Round four is underway. Only 32 fighters left, and we are ready for round four. We got Migo Stevo, who's still in it, man, and he's going up against Do You Even UFC, though? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Are you listening? Ricky J. Sparks. What up, people? Welcome to round four, and it's only fitting, man, that we get to see a heavyweight bout. We haven't seen many heavyweight matchups in this tournament and in past tournaments, so this is a nice, interesting treat. And it's funny when you, well, I don't know if it's funny, but it's pretty crazy. Yeah, that's a better word. It's pretty crazy when you get into a heavyweight fight because one little mistake could end it. And that's one thing I love about this game is that when you get into the heavyweight big boys you got to be so careful just just like in real life one mistake and the fight could be over but anyhow we got Migo Stevo who's still in this tournament and he's going up against do you even UFC though and it's been confirmed that do you even UFC I'm just gonna call him UFC though he is not an alternate account he is his own guy he's not some guy hiding behind this alias and Migo Stevo, do you guys remember I faced him a while back in ranked and he's improved so much and he is in the round of 32 and let's see what happens here and I feel like when it's Verdum and Kane on the feet it's pretty even man it's pretty even Kane has the slight power advantage but I feel like Verdum his punches are he could let his punches flow a little bit better than Kane's. And then when it gets to the mat, man, you got to give the advantage to Verdum. Especially when he gets on his back. Oh, look at Migo. <laughs> oh, Migo is doing great so far here. And I have a question for you guys. Remember when Verdum got knocked out by um, Stipe? Why was he doing that silly, stupid looking f clown face before... The fight began. Anybody know the whole history behind that? Oh, look at this! Remember that was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen while watching a UFC event. Him doing just this weird smiley face to the camera. He did it multiple times as he, as he was being introduced and then moments later he got knocked out. But anyway, let me know the whole history behind that if you know it. But this round is really even after that drop, man. So UFC though strikes back, man. And let's see what Migo has off of his back. When you are using a Verdum, you know, when you're off your back, it's actually one of your best offenses. Oh. And I don't think UFC, though, wanted to get that reverse. Some guys, like some of the elite grapplers in this game, they love giving off, giving up top position in order to get into full guard so they could work their submission game. But I don't think UFC, though, wanted to give up top position especially especially using Kane Velasquez so let's see what happens it's always a fun chess match when guys first get on the mat you could basically you could basically feel your opponent's skills right away and understand just how good they are when you first get rolling on the mat oh nice arm trap right there Oh, good roll. And UFC, though, gets the mount, but his stamina was low, and good on him for not blowing his wad right there, being patient. And what a great round. That, in my opinion, is anybody's round. Really, it is. I may give the edge to UFC, though, just for that drop and for him working the top game action, man. Good job on him. And respect shown both ways, man. My, <laughs> I had to take a sip at a lemon ginger tea, man. My throat is killing me. How am I catching a cold in June? So that's the drink of choice for this video. Lemon ginger tea, Asian style. I'm not talking about the tea bag. I'm talking about the little pellets. It looks like uh, <laughs> rat poison when you put it in the cup. <laughs> nice. steve -O's a durable fighter, man. I've never fought UFC, though, but steve -O He's willing to take chances, and and he's willing to throw some crazy strikes in order to catch you off guard. Nice. And he goes for his first rear roundhouse kick up high. Nice block by UFC, though. 
Wow, he's really tearing up that block. UFC, though, is. And let's see if Stevo is going to just be a counterfighter here now that he's taken a nice lead here in this round. And wow, that's two rocks in this round. Great combo by Stevo. Planting and going for that. What was it? Straight lead uppercut? Or Yeah, it was. And Verdum strikes, man. Oh, oh I was going to say Verdum strikes, is, they're really good, but I don't know about his head health. And this is a, almost like a carbon copy in what happened in that first round where Stevo struck first, but then UFC, though, came right back. And that second round, the second part of that first round was UFC, those round, and he stole that round. But look at this. Migo Stevo. It's actually, I think it's Migo Stevo. But Stevo sounds better, man. If it rhymes, it sounds a lot better. So I'm calling him Migo Stevo. It's interesting that UFC, though, is going southpaw, though, with Kane. Nice head movement. Nice little slight head movement. In a way, that's kind of forcing maybe Stevo to be a little gun shy. He doesn't want to get slip straighted. This is turning into a boxing round. <laughs> a little kickboxing added to it. Stevo checks the clock. Nice. Stevo does such a good job when he's planting. And look at this. He can let his, his he can let his hands go a little bit here. This is definitely Stevo's round. What is it? Three rocks to one. Kind of losing track of the rocks. Oh, but now it's three rocks to two. Wow, that's. So dangerous to sway like that when you're rocked. My dog agrees with that. Wow, Steve has got to back away. Wow, that was a close round too, man. I believe it's 1-1 for sure. Wow, so close to call. Wow, it could be 1-1 or... 2 nothing for UFC though. He landed more significant strikes. I believe he landed more total strikes. It's just Stevo had the more rocks here. So here we go. Let's see what happens, man. I'm on the edge of my seat. This is round four. Who's going to punch their ticket to the round of 16? Oh, and UFC though decides to go for the slow dance action. And Verdum is great in the clinch. I don't know if I would be clinching against a Verdun player. But I like how UFC though planted that seed that you know what, he's just not gonna kickbox here. He's gonna try to grapple, he's gonna try to clinch. He's gonna try to be unpredictable and that's the best fighter, a fighter that's unpredictable. And it's the best when you don't know what's coming. But it looks like here Stevo is content with just throwing heavy leather. <laughs> but he's his gas tank's kind of going down. Nice slip straight. Oh my gosh. Oh, and look at this. That's what I'm talking about, guys, man. The heavyweight division. The margin of error is so small compared to the other divisions, especially those lighter divisions. And Stevo with a much needed victory. Because, yeah, man, looking at those stats, you could say that he was down two rounds to none. And that's got a sting for UFC though, man. Doing so well throughout the course of the fight, but just, oh, the head health, man. The head health was just depleted and there was not much that he could have done right there. Maybe he could have just backed away, pushed off and backed away, but it's hard, man. It's hard to dissect the fight after it happened like that man it was a tough fight it was anyone's fight man it was anyone's fight but we're gonna keep it here i'm very interested to see who they pick next and uh oh we got an jose aldo sighting oh against frankie edgar and this is going to be a very very con highly contested matchup number one because we saw these guys skills man these guys are both really even when it comes to their skill in the game and edgar and aldo are pretty even as well if you look at the stat sheet so here we go the second fight and as this tournament progresses and we move on from round to round it just seems like the intensity 
gets to another level. It's kind of like watching playoff sports. Like I was so fortunate enough to watch the Toronto Raptors go throughout the whole season playing the regular season games and then playing in the playoffs and it just seemed like the playoffs was a totally different game and that's how it is in this man getting to these later rounds of these tournament fights it's it's so intense and it's it's almost like the game changes when the intensity rises just like in basketball and in all professional sports so here we go let's see what happens man let's see who is going to strike first And another thing too, when guys get excited and they get intense into a fight, they tend to fight at a character. And it almost seems like here that Steve-O is really looking to crack UFC though and try to get him out in this first round. And I don't know if that's the best strategy, but maybe it is. Wow. I'm only saying that just because I see his stamina going down. But UFC though is inviting this brawl. And it just seems like it seems like when they're brawling like this, Steve O has the advantage. And every time UFC is going down low, Steve O is looking for that uppercut as well, man. This is this is crazy. It's crazy because one little mistake. And I feel like this fight is going to turn on its head. Oh, see, that's a good job. Oh, wow. You see that? He tagged. Oh, my gosh. He tagged him with that knee as he was coming up. And then he hit him with it again. Migo's got to watch his stamina, though. Oh, I would have gone for the takedown. My opinion, this type of fight is just leaning towards good old Migo Stevo. And do you even UFC though needs to change the whole pace of this fight? Go for takedowns, maybe go for that clench. He tried the clench. Oh, nice takedown defense. Oh my gosh, Migo. Oh no, it's over. Oh my gosh, he got hurt bad. Look at poor Edgar, man, on the canvas. Holy smokes. Wow, and do you even UFC, though, was trying to get the fight to the map, but Migo was doing some great takedown defense and showing some killer, killer combos. And look at that. Good old Migo Stevo is in the round of 16. It's something to be proud of for sure. We, you know, we started off this tournament with 256 fighters. And Migo Stigo, Stevo is still standing. I love saying his name. Try saying his name 10 times, man. Migo Stevo, Migo Stevo. But anyway, great job, man. Great job by both fighters. Congratulations to Migo Stevo, who's going on to the round of 16. Keep on practicing, brother. Anyhow, people, have a great day. This is Ricky J, baby, from Ricky J Sports. And you are awesome.